Okay, so in this video we want to continue to look at data transformation, but today we're going to look specifically at the logarithmic transformation. And you'll remember that um, the two remaining transformations we have to look at, the logarithmic transformation and the reciprocal transformation, are both compressing transformations. So um, we can, um, applying the log transformation to the x variable, can compress larger x variables relative to smaller x variables. Um, so that might linearize um, plots such as the two plots that you're seeing here, or if we were to apply it to the um, y variable, we could compress large y values compared to smaller y values. So perhaps if we had data, um, you know, curving in this sort of direction, these larger y values could be compressed to a larger extent than these smaller ones and hence create a more linear shape. Um, Okay, so let's have a look at um, the logarithmic transformation specifically. So the process is identical as what it is for the squared transformation. We're just instead of squaring x or y values and then plotting those values, we are going to take log base 10 of x or y values and plot those values. Okay, so let's have a look at this example. Um, the average heights of 50 girls of various ages were measured as follows. Um, the scatter plot for the data is shown opposite. Um, least squares regression line is also drawn and its equation given along with the coefficient of determination. So we've got the equation written there. We can see the, the plots over there. Um, it's clear from the um, scatter plot originally that it is a non-linear plot. Okay, You get a nice clear sort of curving pattern happening here that perhaps would be better fit by a curve than a straight line. Um, and the residual plot, the clear curve in the residual plot here also um, uh, confirms that, that a, perhaps a linear model is not the best model. Now a coefficient of determination of 0.84 is pretty high, it's still a strong correlation, um, but we might be able to produce a better fit um, by perform performing a data transformation. Okay, so what we're going to look at doing here is taking log of the age, and so that is going to compress these larger x values to a smaller extent than these x values, and so hopefully get something um, a bit more linear. All right, so I've got the data entered in on my CAS just so we can see it happening. I've already plotted um, the scatter plot. We could add the regression line menu for 6 and 2 for A plus BX. And we get what we're seeing on the CAS over there. We could also have a look at the residual plot menu for 7, 2, and we're seeing that residual plot there might just hide that residual plot, it just makes things a bit crowded on the handheld screen. And you 472 again. Um, okay, so what we want to do is take log of the x variable, which is age in this case. So I'm going to go back over to my data tab and I'm going to add in another column of data, which is going to be log age. Now you can't, if you put log brackets age, um, it'll actually use the log function it'll say you can't use that in a name so um, just make it the one word or use an underscore in between. Uh, okay so we're going to use the formula here so in the um, formula cell equals is the first thing we type and then we want age so you can press your variable button and choose age from there or you could just type age uh, sorry I need to put my log in first so log base 10 so remember log is control 10 to the power of x over here next to the number one um, we write a 10 in the base. If you leave the base blank, that's fine. The default base is 10, so um, the CAS will assume if you don't write anything in that um, little box at the bottom there that you mean 10. Okay, so now let's put age in there. So we want log base 10 of age. Pressing enter, and it will fill the column with log base 10 of whatever number is in the age column. Okay, great. So over to our scatter plot again, changing the age variable on the horizontal axis to log age and we see the data become more linear. There's still a curve to it, but it's more linear. That's confirmed by the higher coefficient of determination. We now have a coefficient of determination of 0.9, um, and so we have a better fit than what we did previously. So our new um, equation we can see from the CAS there is y equals 24.26 plus 117.17x. Um, this, in this case y is height and in this case x is log of age. So our equation becomes this equation that we can see here on screen. Um, the coefficient of determination as I said has now become um, 0.90. 
Okay, so whilst there's not a significant visual difference between the original and the transformed, it's clearly an improved model based on that um, coefficient of determination. Okay, so in this first example, what we want to look at, we'll do a data transformation ourselves in a second, but we want to look at using the transformed data in the previous example to make prediction. So now that we've improved our model after the data transformation and we have a um, better equation, this one here with log base 10 of age in it, um, we want to use this equation now to make predictions. So use the transformed data in the previous example to predict the heights correct to the nearest centimetre of girls of the following ages. So a seven year old girl would mean we need to let the age be seven. So height is going to be 24.3 plus 117 times log base 10 of seven. All right, let me get a calculator page in here. All right, so 24.3 plus 117 times, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> not trick, log uh, base 10, sorry, base 10 of seven, control enter. Uh, that would predict a height uh, to the nearest centimeter of 123 centimeters. Um, a, a girl who is 10 years old, um, the predicted height would be 24.3 plus 117 times log base 10 of 10 and a half. So I'll just take my previous calculation on my CAS and change the 7 to 10.5. And we find the predicted height is 143. Uh, sorry, 144 to the nearest centimeter, centimeters. And a 20 year old, again, same calculation. Height would be 24.3 plus 117 multiplied by log base 10 of 20. So changing the 10.5 in my CAS over here to 20. And that would predict a height of 177 centimetres to the nearest centimetre. Which of the predictions in A were obtained by interpolating? So remember interpolation is when we make a prediction within the range of the data values. So if we go back up to our data set here we can see that our, sorry let's go back to the original data set, that our ages range from 9 to 18. Therefore any prediction that, that's within that, that age range would be an interpolation and would be considered pretty reliable. Any prediction outside of that range is an extrapolation and may not be reliable. Okay, so um, what did we say the range was? 9 to 18. So therefore, 7 and 20 are both in, um, extrapolations. Okay, and so 10.5 years. Um, that's not really the right sentence. Um, the prediction for 10.5 years. Yes. Um, was an interpolation. The other two are both extrapolations outside of that range of data values. Okay, so let's have a look at going the other way. So by that I mean um, applying the log transformation to the y variable rather than the x variable. So it's still going to compress, compressing larger y values. So a shape perhaps that curves this way, we're going to be able to linearize that or shapes that curve this way, we're going to be able to linearize potentially using the um, log transformation applied to the y variable. Okay, I've already got this data entered in as well. All right, so we want to apply a logarithmic transformation to the following data by transforming the y variable. Okay, so I've entered my data in, I've called my columns x var and y var for x variable and y variable. Fit a least squares um, regression line to the transformed data, giving the coefficients in the equation correct to three significant figures. State the coefficient of determination. Uh, use the equation from A to predict the value of y. Okay, all right, so we need to get our transformed regression equation. Let's just um, have a quick look at the data originally. So I'm just gonna insert a data and statistics page. Let's have a look at the plot of the x variable versus the y variable. Okay, so we've got a curve much like this second example here. Um, so we should be able to linearize somewhat by use, applying a log transformation to the y variable. Um, let's have a look at the regression equation here. So menu four, six, two. 
Okay, so there's our equation. Let's just remove that so we can read it. Okay, so coefficient of determination of 0.68, um, still reasonably strong, um, but um, not, not. it's probably a moderate correlation coefficient. Um, let me just work out, I'm just using my CAS separately to take the square root of 0.6789. Um, oh yeah, that's still a R value of 0.82, so still strong, um, still a strong uh, correlation. Okay, all the same we can see from the shape that linear perhaps is not the best model. So we'll apply, we'll apply a data transformation. Okay, so let's go back over to our data list. Let's add in another column, which will be, sorry, which will be um, called log y. So we're going to take the log of the y variable equals, uh, so log, control 10 to the power of x, make that base 10. Um, log of, and we want to use our y variable. All right, so we've got the data. Back over to our scatter plot. Let's change the y variable to log y. We certainly saw that become more linear than it was. We've certainly got an improved coefficient of determination, and we have our equation happening there. Okay, so on the screen it says y equals 3.00. 6 plus negative 0 0.035 whatever x. Now remembering that x is x but in this case y is not equal to y in the equation it's now log of y. So in our equation it is going to be log of y equal to, now we want three significant figures so that is 3.01 and that's plus a negative so we write that as minus 0 0.0359 to three significant figures. Remembering three is the first significant figure there. Three is the first significant figure there here. So we've got three significant figures um, in each of our numbers and then sorry times x. So there's my equation. So it's not y equals it's log base 10 of y okay because we've applied that transformation and so this is the equation with the coefficients um, correct to three significant figures. State the coefficient of determination um, correct to three significant figures. Okay, so we've got that on screen as well. So we can see that r squared to three significant figures is 0 0.923, which is certainly an improvement of the 0.6 something we had earlier. It's quite a big improvement. Okay, use the equation from part A. So use our regression equation to predict the value of y to the nearest whole number when x equals 22. Okay, so substituting x equals 22 in place of x in the equation. So our equation now becomes log base 10 of y equals 3.01 minus 0 0.0359 times 22. Okay, let's get a calculator page. Now you could type in that 3.01 minus 0 0.0359 times 22. Okay, so 2.22, but that doesn't equal y, that equals log base 10 of y. So we need to solve this for y. Now if you know a bit about logs, and we've talked a bit about them before, y is going to be 10 to the power of 2.22. Okay, So 10 to the power of this number up here, which will be um, to the nearest whole number, 166. Okay. However, there's nothing to say, you could just solve the equation. So you could either solve the equation at the second line after you've worked out what the right hand side of the equation equals. So you could solve log base 10 of, sorry, keeps jumping me out of the brackets. Log base 10 of y equals this 2.22 up here. Solving that for y. And we get the answer that way. Or you could simply just solve the equation right from the outset. So right at the beginning, don't need to enter two separate lines of calculation in. Sorry, it keeps skipping me out of there. Um, so log base 10 of y is equal to 3.01 minus 0 0.0359 times 22. Solve that for y. Okay, 
nothing to be gained by sort of doing half the work. You can just, once you've got your equation, then get your cas to solve it straight away if you'd like. Um, but y equals 166. Again, I want you to add in a moment of does my answer make sense. If you think about, you know, your data values up here, you're making a prediction for 22, which is in here, okay? And so you can see from the data, what's happening with the data, that's probably going to be somewhere between 99 and 147. So therefore, if you tried to give your answer just as 2.22, that, that doesn't make any sense in the scheme of the data that you're dealing with. So try and have a moment of, you know, roughly what should this answer be? Um, and so therefore you can think that through and think, well, does my answer actually make sense? Okay, so um, the box here runs through how you go about applying, applying the log transformation. We've just um, shown you in the video here and the practice for today is exercise 5C.